Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and I have been blown away by what Apple has been able to do with their M1 Pro and M1 Max chips inside of these recent MacBook Pros. Uh, as you know on the channel, I have been speculating for quite some time how these chips would actually perform when they came here. And now that they're here, now that I've been testing them for like two weeks, you know, these are really impressive, not only from a performance standpoint, where you have the CPU on these machines being more powerful than what you would get out of certain configurations of a Mac Pro, but also from even a GPU standpoint with Apple actually making their first Pro GPUs inside of these laptops all integrated into the system and they are performing pretty well. And then of course you have the efficiency angle from all of this where these chips are super energy efficient. Uh, I think the M1 Max is running at a maximum of 30 watts and you're able to get this really amazing performance on battery life with pretty good battery life to boot even when you're doing all of these intensive tasks. Which is why when I think about it, I'm actually even more excited for the desktop versions of these chips where they don't have to be constrained by battery life and we can finally see the full power of what Apple can do on their own custom Apple Silicon architecture. So for this video, I wanna focus on the desktop class of Macs, the only ones that are remaining left in this transition, and basically talk about what I expect to see from these Macs from a performance standpoint. Uh, but let's start with the smallest end desktop in this Apple Silicon lineup. Of course, that is the Mac Mini. Now, we've heard some rumors about the Mac Mini from John Prosser. We haven't heard updated rumors about this product in quite some time, but it's a Mac Mini. There's not really too much to expect here. I know John Prosser said it might have an updated redesign with kind of like a plexiglass top. Um, and you know, just a little bit different than what we currently get with the body of the Mac Mini. I think those rumors are probably true. I think if Apple is going to update the Mac Mini with updated Apple Silicon, which I expect them to do, they still have the old Intel Mac Mini in that lineup. I think if they were uh, going to not give us an M1 Pro or M1 Max version of the Mac Mini, they probably would have secretly discontinued uh, that Intel Mac Mini when they updated the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips inside of these laptops. So whether or not it looks the same or it gets a slight redesign, I don't really think is that important. I kind of think uh, the pricing and the chips it gets and then also the port selection it gets is what's really important with a Mac mini desktop. Now for this Mac mini desktop, I am expecting it to be pretty price friendly uh, when we're talking about the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips because don't forget the 14 inch MacBook Pro starts at $2,000. It is not friendly to get into that uh, laptop. It's a lot of money, let's, let's be honest. So with this Mac mini, if we look at the current Intel Mac mini and, and we speculate that this uh, M1 Pro and M1 Max Mac mini, we'll call it, is going to replace that one in the lineup. So it should be around the same price point. We're probably talking about $1,000 for this version of the Mac mini. Now, traditionally with Mac minis, they have always been kind of like entry-level computers until Apple updated that space gray version of the Intel one, where they actually gave it kind of a strong CPU, uh, but there were some heat and thermal throttling issues with that Intel version of the Mac mini, which obviously probably won't be happening on an M1 Pro or M1 Max variant of the Mac mini. And yes, that's pretty much what I'm expecting for this desktop. I'm pretty much expecting Apple to take the same M1 Pro and M1 Max chips that are in the current MacBook Pros and just bringing those over into a Mac mini form factor, just like they kind of did when they unveiled the first M1 Max. They, you know, had the M1 chip kind of designed for the MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, and then they just put that in the Mac mini enclosure, really expecting the same kind of treatment with this Mac mini. And I think that's a good thing because let's be frank, this will be the most powerful Mac mini uh, that Apple has ever shipped. And if they are going to price it at around $1,000, this is just going to be an insane value for people who need a performative desktop machine that runs Mac OS. And I really think that if they can stick to that price point of around $1,000, this is obviously just going to be such an easy recommendation to make for creative professionals. And I really think a lot of people are gonna go with this machine to save a lot of money and then obviously bring over their own accessories like their own monitor, uh, keyboard and mouse. But another thing about this Mac mini where it will have uh, probably even a little advantage over the recent MacBook Pros is in the port selection. So we've seen, again, rumors from John Prosser saying that it will get like four Thunderbolt USB-C ports, uh, Ethernet port built in, two USB-A ports, an HDMI port. 
Um, the only thing that we haven't seen in these rumors is if it will include an SD card slot, which I'm kind of hopeful for now, now that we've actually gotten that in the recent MacBook Pros. But, uh, you know, if we look at past iterations of the Mac Mini, it's kind of hit or miss whether or not that will actually receive the SD card slot. But I'm, I'm, I'm holding out hope that Apple uh, is going to see the reception on these MacBook Pros and go, well, of course, we're going to put the SD card slot uh, in this machine, too. So yeah, no major surprises with this Mac Mini. Uh, I'm not expecting anything new or revolutionary here. I am just expecting a really good desktop machine with really good performance at a competitive price point where it's going to be easy to recommend. And that in itself is kind of exciting. Now, going down the line uh, to the other Apple Silicon Mac that needs to be updated is that 27 inch iMac. Now with this iMac, we are expecting a new design with more ports, a mini LED ProMotion display, uh, but I just recently did a video covering all of that. So I don't wanna bore people here who already watched that, but if you wanna know everything about that iMac design, I'll leave a video right up here for you to watch. Let's talk about the chips in these Macs, cause this is where I think it's interesting. So I think the easiest thing to say is that Apple is going to follow the same strategy as they did with the M1 iMac and that these, you know, we'll call them the iMac Pro. This new iMac Pro is just gonna come with different configurations of the M1 Pro chip and the M1 Max chip. It will probably be a similar amount of money to spec those up to the configurations that you get with the uh, MacBook Pros. However, you know, looking at Geekbench and looking at multi-core performance, um, if Apple put an M1 Max chip inside the iMac Pro, and I, and I know those M1 Max chips are more than just benchmarks, like they perform a lot better than the iMac Pro, but just looking at the benchmark numbers, um, Apple had an 18 core iMac Pro, which theoretically would outscore an M1 Max um, iMac in multi-core performance. And, you know, looking at the MacBook Pros and looking at how Apple has kind of done this lineup uh, maybe with the exception of the M1 iMac, they've tried to beat every specification that the old Intel models used to have. And if I'm looking at the older Intel model of the current iMac, not even to mention the iMac Pro, um, besides just CPU power, they also had other benefits uh, besides higher CPU core counts. And that had to do with memory as well. So if you look at the, you know, the 27 inch Intel iMac that Apple still sells on their website, you can configure that up to 128 gigabytes of memory. Now I know there's unified memory on these, you know, recent Apple Silicon architecture and people say unified memory is better, but, but you know, look, Apple replaced the MacBook Pro. They probably could have came out and been like, ah, oh, 32 gigabytes of memory is the max, but they didn't do that. They gave you the option to go up to 64 gigabytes of memory, which was the same exact uh, maximum amount of memory that the, 2019 Intel MacBook Pro had. So I feel like Apple wants to meet or exceed specs that they've had on their older Intel machines, which kind of makes me wonder if we will actually see a new chip on this iMac Pro, one that is capable of supporting up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory. And if we look at the rumors regarding Apple's chip development, we may actually see that because up until this point, I kind of didn't think Apple would bin their chips and give you lower configurations, but look at the MacBook Pro. Look how many different chip configurations you can actually order from here. And now that I'm thinking about it, Apple is, and we're gonna talk about this uh, at the end too, Apple is working on a Mac Pro chip, according to Mark Gurman, where they're gonna have 20 CPU cores and 64, no wait, uh, yeah, 64 GPU cores on the low end. And then they're also gonna be working on another Mac Pro chip, a 40 core design with 128 GPU cores. We'll talk about that in just a second, but let's focus on that lower spec one. Now, if Apple is making Mac Pro chips uh, with that 20 core and 64 core GPU design, well, they're probably gonna run into the bidding process that they just ran into into the recent MacBook Pros. Like all of the 20 core chips that they come out to design, not all of them are gonna have the full 20 cores. There's gonna be some defective ones that maybe they could sell an 18 core design or a 16 core design, a 14 core, you, you get the point. So I'm kind of thinking that if Apple wanted to hit that 128 gigabytes of unified memory, that they could, whatever they call these chips, you know, the M1 Ultimate for the Mac Pro or, or whatever, M1 Pro Max is what I personally think, um, maybe with this 
iMac, which we are supposed to see, or the rumors say we're supposed to see in March, if Apple has chips that are binned down from that 20 core design, well, and, and they only have a year left to transition everything over, maybe those binned down chips will make it to this iMac Pro and we'll actually see better CPU and GPU uh, counts on this machine. And again, specs that go up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory to match the current Intel specification. So before I was kind of thinking the iMac Pro would just be the same power as the MacBook Pro, but the more I think about it and the more I realize that Apple, you know, is more unconstrained in a desktop where they don't have to worry about battery life, the more I actually think we will see more powerful chips coming out in March. And that makes me really excited about the iMac Pro. But let's get to the main event, the Mac Pro, right? So we just kind of gave you a spoiler uh, that Apple is apparently working on 20 core and 40 core CPU variants. Now, the way they're doing this, according to the rumors, is there's actually going to be two M1 Max chips in the 20 core variant, and then four M1 Max chips in the 40 core variant. Uh, so this is gonna kind of scale differently than how multi-core CPUs would usually scale, or at least I'm guessing that's the case because these should scale differently if they're actually just putting in two different and then four different chips. I actually ran some, uh, you know, theoretical numbers on just multiplying the M1 Max chip twice and then four times to give you kind of these uh, charts. And you can see that if, you know, this is kind of like a linear progression of just, you know, simple uh, back of the napkin math that a 40 core uh, Mac Pro in Geekbench would score around 50,000 in multi-core. Uh, a 20 core would score around 25,000. And if you compare that to the highest end M1 Max chip, that's only getting a 12,644. And then of course the M1 chip at 7,706. Uh, I also wanted to compare this to the existing Intel Mac Pros that are out right now. And if you look at that again, you'll see that even the 20 core Mac Pro would theoretically outscore the existing Intel maximum 28 core Mac Pro. Uh, so, you know, if these scale in, in the way that I'm imagining they'll scale, um, and I was pretty close with my estimations of the M1 uh, Max chips specifications and CPU performance, so hopefully I'm right about this. These Mac Pros are going to be insane. Like, they are going to dominate the PC industry uh, from a performance per watt perspective and just a performance perspective. Like, these Mac Pros sound insanely powerful, and that's not just the CPU side, that's also the GPU side. So again, the rumors are two M1 Max chips in the lower end configuration of the Mac Pro, and then four M1 Max chips in the highest end. That also means you get to multiply the GPU core count. So M1 Max maxes out at 32 core GPU cores. Uh, the M1 Ultimate or M1 Pro Max with the doubling of that would max out at 64 GPU cores. Then the 40 core variant of that would max out at 128. GPU cores. And again, running, uh, you know, just a simple back of the napkin math kind of scenario, uh, you can see that GPU performance wise, a 128 Mac Pro would outscore the highest end available AMD uh, W6900X GPU that is available in the Intel Mac Pro. And the 64 core version would score lower than that, but it would still be one of uh, the available, you know, workstation GPUs available on the Mac Pro, but you can see that it is still getting us um, a lot better performance than even the M1 Max's 32 core GPU. So yeah, from a CPU and GPU perspective, this Mac Pro sounds really powerful. Now there are some other tidbits about the Mac Pro, like apparently it's gonna be half the size of the Intel Mac Pro. Uh, we'll see if that actually turns out to be true. Obviously these chips are way more energy efficient, so they probably could shrink that design quite a bit. Um, the thing that's a question to me though is if Apple is just doubling and quadrupling the M1 Max chip in these designs, that would only leave a maximum of 128 gigabytes of memory on the double M1 Max chip, just like we kind of talked about with the iMac Pro, and then a maximum of 256 gigabytes of memory on the quadruple M1 Pro Max chip. Um, the problem with that is, again, I, I kind of mentioned how Apple seemingly wants to beat whatever Intel variant they're offering right now. And if you look at the Intel Mac Pro, you can spec that out with up to 1.5 
yeah, I'm not, I'm not kidding. 1.5 terabytes of RAM. So 256 is not close to 1.5 terabytes of RAM. Now, this is unified memory. We've seen how fast the system architecture is already on the M1 Pro and M1 Max chip. So maybe Apple's just gonna go, you know what, we don't need that extra memory. But I kind of wonder if there will actually be some sort of memory expansion in the Mac Pro. Apple put a lot of research and development into that Intel Mac Pro and they made it expandable. From everything we know about the M1 series of chips is they are not expandable. They're not friendly to user replaceable parts, but Apple also did develop the MPX module in the Intel Mac Pro. And I'm kind of wondering if we will actually get memory and storage expandability inside of this Mac Pro with different versions of the MPX module that will work better with this unified memory architecture. And I think it's quite a good possibility uh, that we will see it on this Apple Silicon version of a Mac Pro. I just think it kind of makes sense that, you know, Apple developed the Mac Pro in 2019. Why would they put all this research and development to, into these MPX modules without some sort of future plan when they knew they were gonna be switching over to Apple Silicon in two years? So I'm kind of hopeful that we will get some expandability on the Mac Pro. Um, and it will go beyond 256 gigabytes of memory. Uh, but, but yeah, the Mac Pro obviously gonna have a lot of ports too. It's, it's a desktop, so we should expect at least the same amount of ports that are in the Mac Mini and maybe more depending on how Apple lays this out. Either way, the Apple Silicon timeline that we're getting sounds really exciting. These computers, especially the iMac and, and the Mac Pro, they sound like they are just going to blow away what is available in the PC industry. And I am really looking forward to it. I don't even think I'm gonna buy a Mac Pro. Like I'm not, I'm not the customer for that machine, but I just wanna see it and I wanna see what it's capable of. And I think the iMac is probably more my speed, but we're gonna see, we're gonna see all of it. It's, it's gonna be another exciting year for the Mac. We've had what, one, two? Now we're gonna have three exciting years for the Mac. This is a long cry away from the 2016 generation. And hey, if you made it to this part of the video, it's long. I can see the timer counting down in the, in the clock. We did kind of a deep dive, maybe, but maybe it was more of a rambling, a ramblings of a madman who's just excited about the Mac. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave me a like. Uh, if you wanna see more from the channel, you wanna see my reaction to when these Macs actually get announced instead of just speculation, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.